Have you ever had those silly dev moments where you just repeat almost the same line again and again? Like a series of if checks where you look for the type of your variable and you change the output ever so slightly each time? In addition to being a pain to write, this is often a risky design because if you decide you want to have a different behavior overall, you'll need to re-update everything again, and you could definitely miss something on the way which would produce some inconsistencies. To avoid this, a better solution is to use c -sharp generic types. Hello everyone, Mina here, and today I'm going to talk about a really cool c -sharp tool, the generic methods and classes, and how they can help avoid code redundancy and unmaintainable programs. So put on your c -sharp hats, get ready for some quick tips, and of course don't forget to like and share the video if you like it. c -sharp generics are essentially a way to define an empty model, a sort of blueprint that can then be instantiated and that doesn't know or knows only partially what data type it's working on. From a programmer's point of view, the unknown data types are labeled and booked in memory just like a variable. That's the T in between wedges you might have already seen. Basically, the idea is that in this function, instead of explicitly being an integer, a float, a string or any common types, my v variable has a variable type t. This means that when I prepare the logic in this function, I don't know exactly what t will be. This t type will be specified when I call my function later on. So in my method, I have to make sure that I properly handle the types I'm interested in and that I discard the rest. We can easily check which type we're working with by comparing it to a type of a common variable. So generics are a nice technique to have scalability and consistency. Scalability is a code design principle where you anticipate for the future and make software that can handle a growing amount of work without you having to write a growing amount of patches. Typically, in the case of generics, the whole point is that if you properly do your type checks in the function you prepared, you don't have to create yet another copy of your behavior whenever you add a type. This reduces the clutter in your code base and it prepares future out of the box extensions. Consistency is the idea that you have a standard and uniform way of doing things. It makes it easier to write clean code and, most importantly, code that you can predict the behavior of. That's important because when a bug appears or a feature doesn't work exactly as planned, you want to be able to track down where the issue originated. And having dozens of copies of your logic to look through is clearly not ideal. Rather, having a single entry point helps you scope your research and isolate the problem faster. A typical use case for generics is containers. Since we obviously need to use lists, arrays and all this sort of containing things with different element types, it's pretty interesting to think ahead and make functions that can be applied to containers no matter what they contain. Suppose, for example, we want to get a random item in a list. A naive approach would be to do what we had in the intro. So we have a first function for lists containing strings, another that's almost identical for lists containing ints, and so on. But now that we know about generics, we see that there's a better design here. We can create a generic method with a variable type t and define our logic in just one place. This piece of code is totally agnostic of the type of variable inside the list, it just knows that it's a list and so that it can be indexed at a random position like this. Once we've defined this method, we can use it in our main function with any type of list to get a random string in a series of names or a random int in a series of digits, or even a random item in a list of custom types. The great thing is that if, for some reason, I decide to change my logic, and, for example, add a debug of the number of items available in the list in the function, I just have to update this single method, and all the outputs will directly be impacted. Generics can also be used for classes. That's nice when you need objects to behave just a bit differently depending on the type of variable they're using. 
For example, you could create a class to check if two objects are equal that accepts any type of variables. Or you could add another function to print some info about the variable. And note that you're not limited to a single generic type. A generic method or class can rely on two or more variables. Just make sure that you give them different names and then you'll be able to create way more complex systems. And if you want to perform some further checks on the type that you're passed in a generic method or generic class, you can use the WHERE keyword. This allows you to only accept types that match some interface or core object type, like an I comparable, an I enumerable, a struct or a class. You can even create your own interfaces and pass them in. To sum up, c -sharp generics are a powerful tool for centralizing behavior and anticipating new cases with a similar logic but different input types or output types. They are easy to write and help ensure robustness for your code base. Thanks to generics, you won't have to experience those awkward moments where you just copy and paste the same function a thousand times only to change the type of your arguments. I hope you enjoyed this first video of my new short format and I want to thank you all for being so many to follow my channel. We've just passed the 1k subscribers last week and I just can't believe it. So again, a big thanks to all of you and of course don't hesitate to leave a comment with your ideas for dev tutorials and quick tip videos. As usual, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon for more videos on coding and games.